Well, more now on our top story, the humanitarian crisis that just continues in Syria. Joining me from uh, central London studio, Tufail Hussein, who's deputy director of Islamic Relief UK. Uh, very good to see you. Good evening to you. Um, the latest seems to be the announcement from UN that aid convoys have simply not got through to anywhere near Aleppo the whole of this month. So just what does that mean in terms of those hundreds of thousands of people on the ground in Aleppo? How tough are things there? Uh, evening, Jeremy. Uh, first of all, I think we need to highlight the actual uh, severity of the situation, the, the scale of the disaster. It is modern day. It's, it's the biggest disaster that we've seen in our time. Uh, just the numbers speak for themselves. Over 250,000 people have died uh, within, uh, as a result of this conflict. In Aleppo alone, 300,000 people are under siege and on the verge of starvation. If you look at the, the actual refugee crisis, it's the largest since World War II. 65 million people have become refugees. That's, if you, if you, if you to put it into perspective, that's the population of the UK. So it is, it's, it's, it is a major disaster. It's a massive, massive problem that we, we need to, we need to work towards to find, towards finding a solution. Uh, within, within Aleppo, it's, Look, there, there, is, there is a positive slant to this in that aid is getting through. Islamic Relief is on the ground, is inside Aleppo. Uh, we have managed to get aid through uh, in the last five years. We've, we've helped to distribute over £160 million worth of aid to, to, to people within Syria, within Turkey, in the refugee camps in Lebanon, and also refugees in, in places like Greece as well. But it, it is, it is, it's a grave situation and it's something that needs urgent. Uh, uh, we need to find an urgent solution for it. It's hard for most of us to grasp just what life must be like for most of the people in Aleppo, for the, the women and children there, when there is so little to live on. And what is daily life like for most of them? Well, you know, today's news piece really has been brought about, brought about as a result of uh, the, the strong and emotional image of Omran Daknish. Uh, and... You know, we as aid workers, we see, unfortunately, we see pictures like this and even worse on a daily basis. Uh, for every Umran, for every, uh, for every Alain uh, Kurdi, the, the, young, the young boy that was found drowned on the beach, there are tens of thousands of children that are dying in pain inside hospitals that are also being bombed. Um, you know, you, we have heard stories of of, of children that, have, that are starving. We've, we've had an account of, of a child that, was, that starved to death, that was left on the sides of the street uh, in, in Aleppo because it was too dangerous to go out and, and to retrieve the body uh, because of airstrikes. Uh, you know, so it, daily we hear stories of people that are dying uh, of, of starvation, children that have lost their parents, that, that are wandering around and, 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 and trying to find food from any, any place that they can. The price of food has has, has, you know, has just, you know, gone out of control. Uh, I, there was a, I read a report today for, uh, for one kilogram, uh, uh, for one kilogram of flour, it was, it was in the hundreds of dollars that people were charging for it. So it's, it's a very desperate situation uh, inside places like Aleppo, but not just there, also within the refugee camps and, and refugees across Europe, they're also facing, uh, you know, a very, a very desperate situation too, as a result of this crisis. Is there, are there limits to what the aid agencies can do here? I saw the, the UN special envoy today sort of abandon his latest humanitarian meeting because quite simply there appeared to be no progress in trying to broker a deal to get aid through, let alone to talk to the warring factions about how to resolve the conflict. So, are, I mean, what are your thoughts on the hopes for getting aid to those people and trying to talk some sense into the combatants? Well, look, we as humanitarian organisations, we need to do all that we can. We must never stop working. We must never stop making the effort. Uh, and as, as, as I've said, our teams are on the ground. They are getting aid through. Um, and in terms of a solution, you know, there is no humanitarian solution to a political problem. We, you know, when we see images like Omran today, we, you know, we, we, we need to almost be, uh, it, need, it needs to move us, move us into a positive action. We need politicians across the world to stand up, really, and, and to make greater efforts to finding a political solution, to getting the, the warring parties together and, and, and to have dialogue. Uh, that's, that's, 
is, is probably one of the best ways to find a solution to, to, this, to this problem. But as aid agencies, we must continue working. We must continue making the effort. But it must be difficult for aid agencies when there is, uh, when it is so hard to just maintain your infrastructure in the con country to try and get the very basics, the people there, when it must seem like a great part of the world has walked away and abandoned Syria. Well, today, I, I, I'm, I was just at the memorial service for aid workers, for humanitarian heroes that have passed. Uh, a year to the day, um, we lost one of our own. Nebras El Halaw, who, who died as, uh, through distributing aid. So it, it, is, it is very difficult, it's very challenging, but it's, it's what we do, it's what we have to do. We have to keep persevering, we have to keep trying. Uh, and we just hope that there is a, a, a solution on the line. But for five years, we haven't stopped working there. Tafail Hussein, uh, Deputy Director of Islamic Relief UK, thank you very much for that insight into this terrible situation in Syria.